In this video, I'll be talking to you about using XCTU from Digi, or Digi International, and uh, this is version 6.5.1. I'm running Windows 10, and uh, I'm going to show you how to configure two or more uh, Digi uh, modules, Digi XB three modules in this case, um, to communicate with each other. Before I go on, I'd like to just give a big shout out to this book, Beginning Sensor Networks with Arduino and Raspberry Pi. A lot of the, uh, the work that I did initially was uh, this book was extraordinarily helpful. So back to XCTU. To communicate with any XB radio module, we need to discover it on the network. And I have, I can use, I'll unplug this one. We can use many, many ways of doing that. One of these is using one of these uh, X sticks. This is an older Digi product, uh, plugs into USB. Uh, we can use uh, one of their uh, development boards, their Grove boards, essentially for the names for the connectors. But this is an FTDI based USB to UART uh, IC device, and we can use any USB to UART device uh, in order to communicate with the XBs or the basic XBs. And of course, we're talking about modules which look. Get one fresh out of the box like this. Okay. Um, I'll use the Grove board as as is. I'll plug it into my computer. And then I'll use the Discover module. I do have to know what the configuration, the, the basic configuration is. Essentially, it's a 9600 board, a 8N1, and I can add, um, they all respond to hardware flow control though. So I have the other board rates checked that I have set up at other times on boards. And on a, reason, on a fast machine, it's reasonably quick to discover all, all those. And it will go through all those combinations and discover the, the board then. Uh, there's a number of different firmwares that can be, can be on these boards. And we'll see what these ones have come with. So the device discovery takes a number of seconds to go through all the configurations. And as soon as uh, one's been found, we can, uh, we can go ahead and add, the, add that device. We'll see that this is a Digi, this has actually got firmware Digi XB3 Zigbee firmware. The TH stands for through hole. Uh, there are a number of ways of updating this to the firmware that we want. By the way, the new firmware indicator is, is referring to the fact that there is new Zigbee 3 firmware. Uh, There are a couple of ways to update firmware if you need to. And one way is to create a configuration profile and then to apply it. I'm going to stick with the basic 802.15.4 firmware. So I'm going to update this XB3-24 family to the 802.15.4 through hole firmware. And I'm going to choose the newest firmware there. I can force the module to maintain its current configuration. Sometimes that's advantageous, sometimes it's not. But I'll leave that unchecked for now. Just press update. Now it will take a few seconds, or a few minutes or so to, to, to do. All right, so we now have a radio module with the firmware that we want but of course we need two of them to talk to each other and there are a couple of other things to change uh, and that for me is I will change the node identifier 
Now, this is the other thing that you will find. The node identifier is actually the default is a blank space. So this is just a little tip. We'll find that the default is actually a space character. So well, let's call this one. Let's call this one FAB. FAB. So that's that's node identifier. We can use the same node identifier. We'll use it as its my address. If we use the 16-bit source addressing mode, it's actually a little bit easier to talk to them, to, to for them to communicate with each other. Okay, so now that device is is configured at least as far as being able to communicate it with it wirelessly rather than via the FTDI connection and I'll demonstrate that. Okay, I have a X stick that is on the same that shares the same channel and the same network pan ID. I'll plug that one in. I'll discover it. completely different type of device but I want to show you that uh, that they can they can be uh, connected the same now one way of doing that is to remove the other device from this from that list and I actually physically remove it from the computer so I have another computer over here with a USB port which I've plugged in my Grove Board 2. Um, this is one of those magician's tricks where there's nothing up my sleeve type idea. All right, so let's discover. You let's use uh, this button, which should does what it says on the tin. We'll discover all the radio nodes in the same network that are, that are active. Okay, uh, that's because I think we may have missed around a bit. So let's just let's just uh, try again on that one. Let's discover the device that's actually. Okay, that's where it was. Uh, let's just uncheck a few of those. Make it a little bit quicker. There we go. We'll add the selected device. I'll discover that other node again. It won't matter because it's now an end device. It will still discover these other nodes on, on these other endpoints or remote devices. We'll get rid of this one. And the selected device. I'll read it again. Ignore the hiccup. At 80 parameter V. Now we have them wirelessly connected I want to demonstrate how they can communicate and what is it they can communicate well on the Grove boards there is a number of buttons uh, a commissioning button and a user button now I think the user button is connected to digital input 4 so let's configure the fab 9 digital input to send the information to the device that's called XDC fab 0 so we are in this one's configuration. Just want to confirm that. Uh, we will scroll down here and see that it's that it's an end device. We will see that we have set its MY source address. Now that this is where the first thing we want to do, we want to we want to actually set its destination low address for anything. And destination low, so this is we'll we'll use the uh, Essentially, what it what it does these these devices can be used 
in a number of different modes, uh, including cable replacement for our SC32 cables, for example. But what what will happen is that we can actually uh, uh, set this up so that anything that appears on its inputs, if we uh, set it up correctly, will appear as a will be sent as a as a frame or message to the other XTC unit, the XTC Fab Zero unit. So what we do here is just we simply use the 16-bit short address. So if we use the 16-bit short address of this one, which I'm pretty sure is FAB0, then if we configure the inputs correctly, then that will automatically trigger a output to that device. There are a number of different ways of data transmission, but let's show you the simplest ones. We'll use I would normally set this up in uh, API mode uh, rather than transparent mode. The API mode setting RF packets received can be formatted into API frames and sent out the serial port. When API is enabled, the serial data must be formatted as API frames as, a, as transparent mode is disabled. Okay, I'll put back to that in a second. Now I'm pretty sure that we've set the the board rate. And obviously, if I refresh that, we'll see that change there. And the reason why that wasn't refreshed is that we did have this problem with uh, with the uh, whatever. So let's let's look at the digital inputs. I'm pretty sure that. DIO4, which has these values here, is actually uh, set as uh, uh, the user button. Okay, so let's now enable it as a digital input. We are going to use we're going to confirm okay right now we can see that the pull-up resistors on that input are set as a pull-up one internal pull-ups enabled and the direction pull up and pull down direction FF is they're all set as pull-ups okay so I think that's all I need to do now what we will do is also if we're going to use event driven program is we're not going to do line passing Uh, it's possible what I'm looking for here is the event driven settings and that may change oh, here we go the sampling rate so right now it's set as zero if it's set greater than zero will be sampled uh, okay we're not going to use that we're going to set it we're going to leave it at zero we'll look at I see digital IO change detection Bit field, it's a bit field that configures the when which digital input pin should be monitored for change detection. So we are going to model monitor number four. So I'm going to use the value calculator. Okay, because the reason I'm doing that is that the digital inputs are not necessarily configured one to one. In this case, for this one, they are bit four DIO four. So here we go. Field calculator. Is it? Now that's the only slight disadvantage of having this chat full screen is that some of these boxes will exceed the area. So uh, what I've got here is I'm actually uh, going to say a bit. This lower byte, O4. And I'm going to write that. Maximize this. So right now, I've configured essentially what is event driven. I 
detection. I am going to ensure that it will only collect one sample before uh, transmission. And I'm going to also make sure that there are no, it's no, there's no sleep cycles. It's not going to sleep actually. All right, so that should be the minimum configuration. Normally, as I said before, I would set API mode to API mode of escapes, but I'm just going to leave it in transfer mode and see if that's going to if that's actually enough to to configure it. So what we'll do is we'll go back to this device here, and then we'll go to this tab here. What we're going to do is look at the open this communication, and I will pound the user button. Now, what's happening there, we'll see two receive packets for the device XT Fab Zero. Why are there, why are there two? If I clear that field and I press it slightly, what we'll see is that there are two events driven, one for the button press and one for the button release. The frames type is this RX receive packet 16 bit address IO and the data that it's transmitting is digital input 4 or digital input output 4 stroke AD4 digital value low and this one will be digital value high. So, as this is event driven, high is when I release the button, so high is its, 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 is its state. So we have two states, on or off, and then the transitions between the states. So what, we've, what we're actually discovering and what we're seeing is the transition between the states. I can change the number of IO points I sample, but the mask is a way of ensuring that only the ones that you want to see change. So, the, for example, there's a commissioning button or a reset button. I can hit that and nothing happens because we're not looking for that button. Okay, I hope that was a relatively clear way of setting up, of demonstrating how to set up an XT module. Some common issues are if we open this communication port, let's just clear that, that thing here. If we try and have this one selected, we cannot use that one. I don't have a communication console. We also have to enable uh, on this one. In its configuration, we have to have this one set for API mode, at least. So if I set this this original device for API disabled, and I like that. If I look at this discovery here, if I try open this channel. Okay, now it's scan mode. Sorry, scan mode. Radio mode modules in transparent mode do not support network discovery process. Okay, well, let's just leave it at that. So we close this. So we press the button here. Okay, it's unusual. I don't normally see that. So what's what we're seeing here is when we're in AT mode, transparent mode, we'll see directly on the console the unencoded or the raw frame data. So I can see that 83 type 83 is the uh, uh, is the hex value for the 16 bit one here and that is the raw frame data. Okay so to fix that if you see this you're not seeing the decoded values, you're seeing their raw data. So let's fix that. We'll clear that session. We'll go back to this one. Here and we'll change API mode to API mode API enabled with API mode 2, which is essentially with escape characters. Would you like that? This right here, if we open again that 
connection. Let me use the button. We'll find that now the frames have been properly decoded. With the same data, the, the actual bytes here are exactly the same as we saw before. We see the API mode here, and then we see it the frame decoded. see the 16-bit source address, we see the signal strength which is useful, we see the number of samples, the mass that we're using and we see the values again. So that's all great. Okay let's configure wireless security. Now I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this on the remote device first because I want to be able to access it again. So, without having to plug it back into this one here. So we'll we'll create an encryption key, and we'll just use Fab9 as the key. The key is essentially anywhere between one and thirty-two hexadecimal characters, and uh, once it's once it's written, we can't read it again. So we'll say Fab9 for that one. We'll write that, and then we'll enable. Okay, that one's still present. I'll remove it from this list. And let's just leave it at that for a second or two. And let's just see if we can now see when I pound the button. Okay, we're not receiving any frames. I'm pretty sure the only device we'll ever discover is the other unit here. So we have a number of network discoveries. Just looking down this list to see if there's anything else apart from 9EB. No, I'm not seeing. I'm not seeing Fab Zero anywhere. Let me go back to this device. On this device, we'll enable the same security configuration. Now we'll see if we can discover wirelesses on the network or remote devices. And we only discover Fab9 on the selected device. We can see that if we clear the frames and we then Pressing the release our button, we get the same data again. If we look at discovery, we will only discover the two nodes on the encryption network. 